Hi guys, I'm Noel Powell here to show you the latest effect from creationeffects.com. It's called Shapeshift and it lets you create some very cool looking 3D transition effects for your videos in Adobe After Effects. It's a great way to set your content apart because it's a really unique effect. Uh, maybe you can kind of see what's happening in these clips. You've got some footage that looks normal but then everything starts to rotate and actually what happens is the camera orbits around a bunch of 3D shapes and you start to see that the footage is being displayed on the sides of the shapes. And as the camera orbits around to that side, everything looks 3D and disorienting, um, kind of like the movie Inception. So this effect uh, can be used as a transition effect with two or more clips, or you could use it on just a single shot and loop it, and people will just want to stare at it because it's mesmerizing and kind of trippy. And uh, if you've looked around at creationeffects.com, you know that I like trippy stuff. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do all that. I'll show you first how it works and then how to use the finished presets. And then I'll show you how you can make your own designs and unique transitions using the included shapes and arranging them however you want and adding sound effects and all that. I've made it really easy to do in After Effects, uh, but there are a lot of options, lots to show you. So let's get started. Once you download it, you'll have this zip file. And if you're on a Windows machine, just right click it and choose the Extract All option and that will help you avoid any errors in After Effects about missing files. Or if you're on a Mac, you can just double click it to open it. And then in the folder, you have the, the Shapeshift project file. It's a template, not a plugin, so there's nothing to install. Just open that project in After Effects. Then you'll be greeted with some instructions here in this comp named Getting Started. And down here, you can see I have other text layers that you can unhide if you want. Uh, to get more information like descriptions of all the customization controls and some troubleshooting tips at the bottom here. Uh, we don't need to go over these, but I just want you to know that they're here. And up in our project panel, we have a 4K folder and an HD folder. The contents of the folders are exactly the same. Uh, one is just higher resolution than the other. So just pick the one that you need. And if you need a different resolution, pick the one that's closest to what you need, and then you can change the resolution of the final comp uh, to whatever you need. I'm going to use the HD version because it's faster to work with. And your first step is to import your footage. Uh, so go to File and Import and File. I've already got some clips in here that I'll use. Uh, you can use as many clips as you want. You can see inside this folder, put your footage here. There are six pre-comps for dropping in your footage. Because back, bottom, front, left, right, and top. So I'll drop these three clips into these pre-comps. The camera faces the front by default, so you can put your starting clip in the front pre-comp. And then maybe I want to orbit down to the bottom, so I'll put my second clip in the bottom pre-comp. And then I'll orbit to maybe the right side, so I'll put my third clip in the right pre-comp. And just so we don't have any empty sides, I'll put my first clip in all three of the remaining pre-comps. Okay, all this will make sense soon. I'm just setting it up so that I can explain it. And if you don't want to know how it works and you just want to render something fast, you can skip this part and go to the chapter on the presets. So after you put your clips in the pre-comps, you would normally open this presets folder here and you'd have a bunch of finished designs in here so you can get a variety of looks. Or if you wanted to build your own design from scratch, you could use this Shapeshift Blink comp here. I'll show you all of that in a bit, but let's look at this example I made. It has a really simple shape so we can see what's going on. So we have this shape here in the middle of the scene, and actually it's made up of several smaller shapes uh, that we can control individually. So you can see down here we have a cube, which is these layers and we have some cuboids. That, that's a fun word to say. I didn't realize it until I said it out loud just now. Uh, but cuboids are like rectangular cubes. So uh, this grid just helps us see our shapes better, but I can turn that off. And you'll see that our footage is being projected onto the six sides of the shape. And yeah, this is a weird shape with a lot more than six sides, or at least it's made up of many planes, uh, but it still has six main sides. We have a front, and back. Uh, I'll use my camera tool to show you. And top and bottom, right, 
and left. Now, as some of you may have guessed, uh, this template uses a technique called projection mapping or 3D camera projection to uh, project your footage onto the sides of your shape. So I have this little diagram to show you how it works. I actually made this for another tutorial, uh, but I keep making tutorials that use projection mapping. So I've now used this image three times, but whatever. So projection mapping is like a movie theater. In a movie theater, you have the, the lamp in the film projector and it shines through a film strip and it projects that image onto a screen. And After Effects can do that too. Uh, we just use a spotlight layer for our light and then we scale down our footage and put it right in front of the light and the light shines through it to project the footage onto our screen, uh, which in this case is our 3D shapes. And when you project an image onto a 3D shape, if you look at that projected image from wherever the, the light is, from the vantage point of that light, the footage will look normal. But when you move around to look at it at different angles, it makes the image look 3D. You start to see the, the 3D geometry. So let's go back to our scene. Uh, you see these? These things are our spotlights. I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit. And you can see we have one for each side. And right in front of each of these lights is your footage scaled down so much that you can't even see it here. So let me go to a side view. So we have our spotlight and our footage is right in front of it. And if I select our main camera layer, you can see it's actually at the same position as the light. Now I'll go back and uh, go to my control layer, which has all of my customization controls for the scene. I want my camera orbit controls. And just watch the camera here as I adjust the controls. You can orbit it in any direction. And if you stop at increments of 90 degrees, the camera will rest in the exact same location as one of the light layers. And that's when your footage will look normal. So uh, let's see what that looks like. I'll undo that so that the camera is in its default position uh, facing the front. And I'm using my preview camera now, but if I move my main camera above my preview camera, then the main camera becomes the active camera. So now we're looking at the front of the shapes and I'll orbit the camera to face the bottom. Okay, we did that, but you can see a problem here. We have this empty space here where we don't have any shapes. I'm gonna activate my preview camera again uh, to get a bird's eye view of our scene. And I hid these layers earlier so it would be easier to see our main shape. But these layers down here make up our background and it's basically a huge cube made of your footage and it surrounds our entire scene. So this will fill in the empty space. All right, let's take a look at the presets folder. Uh, these are 14 comps like the one that we just looked at, but they all have different shapes. So they each give unique looks when you orbit the camera. And keep in mind that usually the arrangement of shapes looks different from every angle or on each side. And you can orbit your camera in any direction you want to, to get to any side. So you can actually get lots of unique transitions out of each one of these presets. I'm not gonna spend long on these. Uh, I'll just show you how to orbit the camera and then we'll go over how to make your own designs and you'll learn what all the other customization controls are for. So once you have your footage inside all the pre-comps, you can open any of these. I have in their title the number of planes used to build the shape. Uh, so these give you an idea of how fast the comp will, will preview or render. So some of these with hundreds of planes can take some time to render. Uh, I'll open this large blocks comp. If, if you want to get that bird's eye view of the shape like we had before, remember you can just drag your preview camera, and that's camera two, above camera one. And then if you want, you can turn on the grid. Uh, just select your control layer. And then in your effect controls panel, and by the way, if you don't see this panel, just go to window and effect controls. And in there, you'll see all the customization controls. So open the section that says preview mode and check the checkbox that says turn on preview mode. Now you might notice uh, that we don't have a background cube in this, in this comp. 
Uh, most comps have one, but this one actually has what I called center planes all the way at the bottom here. I'll solo those. So it's just these intersecting planes and they do the job of filling in the, the empty spaces between the different shapes. So let's orbit our camera. We need to activate our main camera again and I'll open up the camera orbit controls section on the control layer. I'll just go forward a second uh, to wherever I want the transition to start. And we're looking at the front by default. So um, I put different footage in the bottom side. So to go to the bottom, we need to orbit the camera around the X axis. And if you're not sure which axis, you look at this 3D reference axis here, which tells you where you are in the scene. So we can either rotate the X value of this orientation control or we can edit this X rotation control. They do the same thing, uh, but you have both options because you're gonna need them both. Sometimes you won't be able to orbit in the direction you want with just the rotation controls or with just the orientation controls. So you might have to use a combination of both. I need a keyframe first. Um, I'll hit the stopwatch icon and then I'll go forward to when I want the transition to end. I think usually three seconds is a good amount. Um, so I'll set my X rotation to 90 degrees. So we have our first transition and we're looking at the bottom of the shape now. And next I wanna go to the right side because that's where my next clip is. So I'll go forward a little bit and you can do this in whatever way works. You might have to play around to see which control you need because we've already changed the orbit and now the orientation of our, our camera has changed. For this, I can use uh, th this orientation control on the Z axis. I'll add a keyframe and go forward another three seconds and I'll set this to negative 90. So let's take a, a second to state the obvious here. She's looking at us sideways. So we need to spin our camera as we orbit. Also notice um, our footage is tiled. Uh, that's just so that we don't see the edge of our footage. I think the effect looks better if the footage just continues out of frame. But let's turn our camera as it orbits. Uh, so we just need to add a couple more keyframes. This will be on the Z rotation. And that should do it. But this won't look that good because these are linear keyframes, which means the camera is orbiting at a constant speed from beginning to end. We want to start slow and speed up and then slow down to, to a stop as it finishes. It's just going to look a lot nicer. So we'll just select all the keyframes and we'll right click and choose keyframe assistant and convert these to easy ease keyframes. So that's going to be a lot smoother. Uh, but if you're like me, easy ease just doesn't quite cut it. Uh, it doesn't slow down enough. So what I usually do, I go to the graph editor and you can select any of the properties with keyframes and then just drag these handles a little bit to make the ease in and the ease out last a little longer. All right, let's see what that looks like. Okay, I'm happy with that, uh, but it could use some sound effects. So I'll open up my sound effects folder, and these are all public domain files taken from pixabay.com. And if you want to find more, you can just go there and do a search. Everything's free. Or you can pay for something else from a stock site, whatever floats your boat. I'll just drag one of these to my timeline. And actually, I usually use two or three together just to create a more complex sound with more depth. Uh, just be sure to check your audio levels and make sure that you're not in the red. If you start piling on those effects, it can get kind of loud. And also, you'll want to trim these to be the right length. Let's go over how to create your own shapes now. So this is your chance to be creative and try and think of new patterns that will look cool when you orbit. So to get started, we want a blank slate. So I'll open up this comp, shape shift blank. Uh, the only shape that's in here is this single cube, which we can keep or delete. I'll just delete it. 
Now I'll open up my shape library folder. Each of these comps have different shapes in them and uh, you can add as many as you want in any combination to your scene. So we'll just look at a few of these. Uh, let me open up this pyramid because this is pretty typical. All of the shapes are made up of solid layers because only solid layers will accept the projection. So you can see we have all the different sides and then we have this control layer and all the sides are parented to the control layer. So to move your shape around or to scale it or rotate, you can just use the transform properties of the control layer. And to get this in your comp, all you do is copy and paste them uh, as the instructions say, but read these because a few shapes require you to do it a, a little differently. Uh, but for this one, I'll just select the layers and to keep them in, in this order, select the top layer first and then shift select the bottom layer and go in here, and I usually put them uh, above the background cube layers at the bottom. All right, I'll go back to my shapes and I'll show you the planes. This has 15 different planes, uh, just solid layers with a mask. So you don't have to use 3D shapes. You can use these and just arrange them in 3D space if you want. Uh, they can simply be copy and pasted. And if you wanted to create your own plane, you just add a new uh, white solid layer, draw whatever mask you want on it with a pen tool, and just copy and paste the grid effect from one of these other layers, and also the material options, because those are what will make it possible to project the footage onto your plane. So you can select one of these layers and expand it, and then select the material options, copy that, and paste it to your solid layer. All right, what else? Uh, there are a few shapes in here with curves in them, like this curved plane. They're actually made of a bunch of smaller planes all linked together. And if you go to the control layer, uh, you can adjust the bend angle and some other stuff here that you can explore. This is an effect I called layer bender because it can be used to curve footage or photos or solid layers by breaking them up into pieces and uh, I'm probably going to make this a free product soon if that interests you. And you'll be able to find it in the freebie section of uh, creationeffects.com once I get it up. And lastly, I thought I'd mention these four shapes here. There are two background cubes. If you remember, uh, we looked at that. Uh, one of them is made up of your footage and the other is made up of solid layers. So your footage gets projected onto it. And you can read about the pros and cons of either inside those comps in the comment column here. And by the way, I have comments on a bunch of layers uh, that go into detail about how everything works. So you can read those if you want more information. Uh, you'll just have to stretch this out and expand the layer so that you can read it all. And then under the background cubes, we have a couple options for center planes. Uh, those are the intersecting planes that we looked at earlier. And again, these ones are made up of pre-comp layers with your footage, and these are the solid layers with your projected footage. All right, I've been saving the best for last. Uh, I'll show you how to make your own designs now. I'm going to copy one of these cuboids here. I'll select the layers, uh, starting with the top, and copy and paste them to my shapeshift blank comp. And I'll turn on preview mode to make it easier to see what I'm doing and I'll activate my preview camera. You want this camera because not only does it show the whole shape, uh, but you can move it around with your camera tools to see your shape at, at different angles. The other camera can only be moved with the customization controls. Okay, if you remember earlier, I said you can edit the shape with the shape control layer. So I can position this wherever I want or rotate or scale it. Something to keep in mind, you might not want to scale it up too much. Like if you scale this up more than 300% or so, you might notice some aliasing, some jagged edges on the layers, on the layer's edge. It doesn't affect the sharpness of the footage being projected on it at all. Uh, it just, just the edges start to lose resolution. And it's not usually a big deal, uh, but if you're concerned about that, what you can do is go to the shape library in the 4K folder and it has all the same shapes, but they're twice the size or twice the resolution. Anyway, as I was saying, you can edit individual shapes if you need to. 
but there is a better way. I'm going to duplicate this cuboid like eight times, so we'll have nine shapes total. Actually, instead of duplicate, I'll, I'll copy and paste them to keep all the layers together. I'll go down here and paste, and now you can see this is cuboid two. And I'll do it again and just keep going until we have nine. All right, it still looks like one uh, because they're all on top of each other. But look on the control layer. We have all these different sections of controls, and these can be used to quickly spread out your shapes in either an orderly pattern or just randomly scatter them. So we can start with these grid spacing controls. We have nine shapes, so how about three rows and three columns? I'll set these to three and I can spread these out like this. And then watch what happens when I add more shapes. I'll, I'll copy all of these shapes and I'll paste them down at the bottom. So now we added a whole other dimension to our grid. So now it's a, a 3D grid. I'm gonna undo all that. Uh, we'll just stick with nine shapes to keep it fast. All right, next we have these incremental controls. Um, you'll just have to play with those, but they, they add incremental or progressive changes to the position, scale, or rotation, depending on the shape's distance uh, from the center of the scene. Then in the randomized controls, if you want the shapes to appear more random, uh, again, you have position, scale, and rotation. And then to try new random results, just change the random seed here. Um, and lastly uh, are the global controls. These will affect all the layers equally and together. So I can quickly uh, change their shape, like stretch them all out like this. Uh, maybe I'll flatten them a bit. All of the changes you make using any of these controls are all added onto each other. So that, that gives you a lot of control. Um, you could use all of them if you wanted to, which uh, would be weird, but you could do it. Now, uh, something important I should mention, uh, these controls I showed you only affect shapes with the words shape control layer in their name. So let's say you got all of your shapes arranged the way you want them using the controls and it's perfect, uh, but then you want to add more shapes and you want control over where they go. So just rename the control layer for that shape. It's only looking for these three words, shape control layer. So we can just delete the word shape and uh, then you can move or scale this shape more easily and it won't be affected by those controls. Also at the bottom here, these projection mapping controls, I, I don't think you'll need to change those, but if you feel like experimenting, uh, you can read about them in that getting started comp here. And one other important thing is this extend edges control. If you're moving your shapes around and you want them to come all the way out here, you can do that, uh, but you can see that the footage isn't being projected that far out and we just see the white solid. So you can increase this extend edges control. This just tiles the footage out as far as you need it. Uh, it will make it a bit slower though. And that's all I wanted to show you. I hope you like the effect. Uh, you guys can go blow some minds now in your TikToks and your Instagrams on the internets, uh, whatever you crazy kids are doing nowadays. And also if you like trippy stuff, like I said, I got a whole bunch of it, like Creation Trippy Effects, which is a huge collection of trippy transitions and effects for Adobe After Effects. Uh, different psychedelic looks for your footage, as well as hypnotic or mesmerizing animations that you can customize. Or there's Infinite Horizon. It lets you drop in your footage and create perspective bending scenes from it in 3D, kind of like this template, uh, but you can do a lot more and it's, it's designed for landscape footage. And speaking of landscapes, uh, the last template is called Landscaper and it lets you create custom 3D landscape animations in After Effects. Anything from beaches to jungles to deserts to winterscapes to fantasy landscapes and it includes 30 finished landscapes and a ton of nature effects. Also I have a series of templates for adding birds, insects, or fish to your footage or animations. 
So schools will let you create custom schools of fish or marine mammals. Swarms will let you add realistic swarms of insects with lots of species to choose from. And flocks lets you make custom flocks of birds and it makes it really easy so that anyone can do it. And I'll leave with Creation Artifacts, which lets you convert your footage into animated artwork in pencil or watercolor or, or charcoal and about 40 other artistic mediums.